Welcome, everybody, to Geek Boots, Military Nerds. Here at Geek Boots, we like to talk about the big green weeded out likes to continue to fuck us. Just like when you go from the hospitals on post to the VA when you're out. Suck a fucking dick, dick motherfucker. Suck a fucking dick. Motherfucker. Suck a fucking dick, motherfucker. Suck a fucking dick. Motherfucker. I am <laughs> right. I am your host, Tom Cruise Cosplay. With us tonight is a whole bunch of dudes, so it's about to be a sausage fest in here. We got Single Dad Life Adventures. Evening. We've got, in the morning, J4 Props. Good morning. <laughs> and with us tonight, a special guest. Um, he is part of the William C. Stacy American Legion, post 206. We got Jordan on with us tonight. Ahoy, I have a paper straw. <laughs> Good to know. Doing, doing your part. Doing <laughs> your part, I guess. No, I just have that uh, gift. Yeah. Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself, good sir? Uh, well, you already know my name, but yeah, Jordan Houghton. I was in the Army for four years, uh, combat medic with the infantry unit down in Fort Lewis, Washington, for those that don't know, and had a fun little time in the sandbox. Did you get to play with and make castles while you were over there? The moon dust is not really conducive to it, but it I tried. Doesn't, it doesn't work. <laughs> it just fucks up your boots. I see so many people out there trying to make little sand castles going, this is bullshit. I demand a refund and a, and a conversation with my recruiter. I wanted to make sand castles in the sand. Pretty much <laughs> Don't go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> I'm thinking of the other guys now, and I'm just like, did you make that reference on purpose? And then you just go, I don't know what that means. Just don't go to uh, waterfalls, man. Yeah, yeah seriously. Uh, for our episode, ladies and gentlemen, it is, as we record this, it is the day of mental health awareness. So we are talking all about mental health awareness because there's, you know, a bit of an, a big issue when it comes down to being in the military. So we're going to talk all about that. Um, just last weekend, a couple of things happened. Um, Jordan and myself went to an event in Seattle throw, uh, where people were throwing axes. And then on top of that, Geek Boots proudly got to help Mayan Goddess on her Twitch um, raise $350 for Mission 22. So lots to talk about. Um, we're going to... Get right into the event, though, that Jordan and I did. Um, I saw this on Instagram, and I had to go. And, of course, I commented whether it was Jordan or whoever responding on Instagram who said, because I said, uh, can I bring my Captain America shield? Do you guys want me to bring my Captain America shield? And their response was, does the Pope wear a funny hat? And I'm like, fuck yeah. So I entered it. We were down at Axe Kickers. The uh, groups that were there were the Mission Continues, William C. Stacy, American Legion, um, Veteran Rights, the Veterans Right of Return, and West Seattle VFW, Veterans of Foreign Wars. Um, I gotta say, kudos to that whole entire thing because I've been to a lot of cosplay events and that was the most welcomed and embraced and loving experience I've ever had going to this event. I've never been to a veteran event like this. So going in and of course I've got the cap shield on me. And Jordan's like, yes, points. <laughs> um, and uh, Lynn is his name, right? He, from the mission yeah. continues. Yeah. He sees me and he has to stop mid brief and go, that's a captain America shield. Hi, who are you? Big old, geek boots t-shirt i'm rocking and i just express who i am and like good, about half of the people that were there all were like oh hey hey what's going on what's up yeah we love being nerds and geeks too we love the captain america shield going on you um i didn't have to walk around much for a whole bunch of people to want to take turns and just cycle around and talk to me so it was a very welcoming environment of uh, different groups of people so 
I'm definitely going to more of these and I'm definitely wanting geek boots to be represented and help these communities and uh, charity events out for sure, because that was awesome. And more veterans should experience what I experienced. So uh, shout out to all those organizations. Uh, Can't wait to work out with them in the future. Uh, I'm going to throw it to Jordan about the event as well. (laughs) <laughs> uh, I'm being attacked by ah, children by a 12 year old yes yeah. oh. yep that's how it works yes uh, um, oh jeez anything you want me to talk about in particular yes everything oh go okay for, go for it. <laughs> um I guess I'll just kind of give uh my perspective on it um yeah so a lot of the groups had uh some functional work prior to this um largely the mission continues and the post 206 folks um most of the people intermingle within that group in terms of what service organization they're a part of so it was a it was a chance to attempt to try and just bring folks to one central location have some fun have some beer some random food items and just kind of make a you know a little evening of it and just hopefully pull in new folks which as we saw happened (laughs) <laughs> and uh i mean it was great i mean you know just i saw this post it looked cool so i came up from bothell well holy shit like, <laughs> you just don't expect that a lot of the time because most folks get tired they don't want to deal with traffic seattle's terrible blah 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 but um yeah it was, it was great folks were chatting the entire time and if you weren't throwing axes you were hanging out talking about captain america's shield and yeah asking to get photos with it <laughs> yeah there was a lot of that but yeah, it was a good event. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was fantastic. There was food. I learned a lot picking Jordan's brain about the difference between being local business and being uh, a community charity organization. I'm like, you know, that sounds very appealing, actually. So we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, it was it was fantastic to meet other people. And there was like three other people who had also told me that um, – one of them, before I left, had said he actually has connections with the 501st, the Star Wars division uh, up here in Washington. So that was fun to talk with him, pick his brain. Another one also cosplays as well. So she had a fun time ha- having a conversation with me. And then another individual, I can't remember his name. Uh, you remember him. You've had conversations with him. A little bit overweight. He said he was in the Navy. Oh, Tom? Tom. Yep. Tom. He, uh, not me, Tom another tom haha <laughs> um he does a lot of D hosting at emerald city comic-con so i was just kind of like it was really cool to oh, just wait, i'm gonna need overweight. his name no you're thinking of peter <laughs> peter is not a little overweight he's he's a big dude <laughs> i mean big black i was guy. trying like i was this. trying to yeah i was trying to be nice <laughs> yeah no uh, he was he was a uh, army army actually oh okay army okay yeah Although, was... i mean he could come off as a navy guy i guess <laughs> Hey now. <laughs> Not saying anything. <laughs> Just saying a lot of things, but it's fine. It's subliminal. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I'll enjoy my old fashion. You're right. Fair enough. But um, I could see why one of these events would be necessary, especially um, who was it that was representing um, veterans' rights, the right of return? Uh, Ryan Mulcarrick. Yeah, he was, he was a cool guy. Actually, I have business cards next to me somewhere hold on that way i can accurately i don't know where they went god damn it i am so unorganized as all hell um he had given me his card and he had told me to my he was like pointed at my shirt and he goes i fucking love your logo dude that's freaking awesome and he expressed that the organization he's a part of is just He wants to host events, do really cool events so that, you know, because not all of us come home, whether from just being in military service in general um, or being home from combat. We don't always get that, you know, nice shiny parade when we get home. So he likes hosting events to help people when they come home from service to feel loved and appreciated of their service. And that was really cool to hear that he did, because honestly, I'd love to be dabbling in that myself. Um, Buy me a taco and let me go home. Got you. We got you. (laughs) 
So do you want me to cancel my communication with him already? Because we plan on doing something just for you. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, it's well, we already know what his plan is. He told us before the show. That is true. Yeah, it's true. We won't discuss it now, but we know. <laughs> we don't want to put a certain someone in that light live on air, depending on if she ever listens to it. But <laughs> yes, we know what uh, he plans on doing. <laughs> but um, dude, yeah, dude, dude, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh god i'm so sorry um yeah no, was, you're not no, no you're I'm not really not um <laughs> but uh to turn this in more into the conversation in terms of mental health i really appreciated this event because <sighs> it's washington state and i don't know a whole lot of veterans and mo i mean it's not every day you find out your battle buddy you just got done serving with is going to the same state you know, when you're done. So to be able to have this event and be able to go in and meet other veterans and be amongst your tribe, your people, it it's an uplifting, enriching, and a an happy experience for me. Um, as one of my friends who's helped me write some jokes for this podcast, who once we get our you know boots really up, he wants to be a part of it, and I totally want him to. Um, he had actually expressed that he has never seen me more happy than when I'm part of Geek Boots and when I'm part of veteran experiences. Um, like, yeah, I enjoy going to conventions and it's a nice feeling not being looked at like I'm a crazy person because I'm wearing a costume around. That's fine and dandy, but to me, there's nothing more enriching than going to this event and having a bunch of veterans want to have a conversation with you because you know we're all in the same band of brothers so to speak and we all want to make sure that we care about one another so it was really enriching i absolutely loved it um everyone there was super nice and super hilarious um yeah i i can't praise that event more and i can't wait for the next one where's the when's the barbecue one happening that's Ooh. what i want to know uh, that's a good question. Um, that's going to be more on, uh, Peter, but I imagine probably before November 15th, before it gets way too cold. Okay. I am 100% showing up, even if I'm not really full on invited, I'm just going to sh show up <laughs> and just be like, hi, remember me? I'll wear the t-shirt, the Geek Boots t-shirt. That way he knows it's me. <laughs> um, but, um. Yeah, uh, now to discuss the ins and outs of community service in terms of these kinds of organizations, because um, Jordan, I, you gave me a lot of information when we were sitting down and talking. Um, how about we unravel that a little bit in terms of community? Sure. Um, what do you want me to hit on? Um, well how do you get started and how it all works if you can <laughs> that's a complicated one yeah uh, uh, yeah i mean, it, I mean about, it's, 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 oh god okay sorry don't hurt me <laughs> how, how about what, what what is like the mission statement of your organization what is what is the focus yeah. on what you guys are trying to do yeah so that's where it gets real fun and interesting actually because um Within the American Legion, it's not quite a pyramid scheme, but it kind of feels like one. Um, you have the national organization that oversees everybody, and they have their choice of like what they're going to do. And there's all these, I call them little, but big programs, such as like American Legion Baseball or, Ever or Boy State, which is about like uh, kind of learning diplomacy and how the government actually works and how you're supposed to get like resolutions through. Um, junior shooting so teaching kids how to shoot correctly properly and efficiently all this random things that the national org is like we got to do it all and then you mold down into the departments um each state is a department and each one of our little uh i guess you call them colonies if you will uh has a department so um, we have one in the philippines we have one that oversees canada a little bit and we have one in france and all this other stuff but each department has its own type of missions. Um, 
Washington State is particularly big on the Boys State one. So we have one called Evergreen Boys State, and that takes place in Camano Island each year. Um, the fun fact about that is going to Boys State, uh, just the department one is five points on like a civil preference for commissioning. So it counts the same as doing like 14 years of Boy Scout work to get Eagle Scout. <laughs> so fun yeah. fact. Yeah. If you get to go to the national one, you get an additional five points. So now you're double tapping, but that's a whole nother thing. And that's more for people looking to go into service. Um, but each department has post um, and post are essentially their own thing. They're singular, but they have some beck and call to the wider organization. So no two posts are going to have the same mission for the most part, um, unless they identify each other as like a sister post. Um, like we have one in Kennewick all the way over on the east side of our state that is our sister post because we're both service oriented. But um, mission wise, 206 um, looks at trying to build a better veteran community throughout the city and the state. And uh, we want to work with other organizations that we have in the area to better cultivate the camaraderie, inclusivity, and kind of pride in that common identity that most of us have as American veterans. Um, we really don't give a shit like what you did in the military other than the fact that you did something like, you know, you existed. And with that in mind, it's like, just come on in, you know, you have the experience, you've been there, you've done that, you've seen all the crap, like, let's figure it out. Um, so we do a lot of the, the building social connections and uh, trying to just figure out ways that we can facilitate or create service opportunities. Um, we did a, huge one with uh with shelly evergreen which is one of our state slash national cemeteries that has many of the veterans um buried there from all the way from the spanish civil war to now and we've been cleaning their headstones for about two years i think we've done like five thousand. and uh if you, if you get a chance to drive by it oh wow those, those that aren't here <laughs> you can actually see the dirty middle section now because it just stands out so much because that's how long it's been since they cleaned it Oh. Wow. That's yeah. awesome, though. Yeah, so that, that was one of our big ones. But we uh, we partner with the Mission Continues frequently to try and support whatever they're doing. So they've had beach cleanups, um, helping refurnish and kind of just upscale a uh, community center that was in South Seattle, where it was a large um, Ethiopian immigrant area. So they didn't have like a safe and easily accessible area for the younger uh, girls especially and this was essentially turned into a dance studio of sorts where they could go after school uh, be safe uh, get away from whatever was going on that wasn't positive in the community and it, it looked nice once we got done and other ones they've worked with are like parks um, the beaches all kinds of stuff so nice. we just we just try to figure out where we can fit in um, it's not really about make this giant defining definition that sets us apart from everybody else. It's more like, where's the gap and what can we do to help fill that? Sure. Nice. That's awesome. America. 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 Yeah. And uh, by the way, I absolutely love that too. Cause while I was I talking, <laughs> I know, right. Well, <laughs> he just walks off. Like, yeah, you offended this. him. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, no, you're not. <laughs> Um, no, that was another thing that I really appreciated. Uh, this is another reason why I enjoy the guys at Grunt Style or Nine Line or Black Rifle Coffee. They're not into that whole... I had to, to refill my coffee. Gotcha. They're not into the whole Pogue crap or that whole stigma. All they care about is, did you serve? Did you take the initiative to put yourself in that 1%? That's all we really care about. Did you want to serve your country? And I absolutely love that when we were talking about that at the event. I'm like, oh, thank God. I Now I ultimately feel welcome because it really ticks me off when I see people do that. It's very toxic in our community to say, well, if you've never seen combat, you don't classify. No, 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 no. Come on, man. Not everybody's lucky and fortunate. Like me, for instance. I'll go on I, the oh, please. Yeah, lucky, fortunate, not okay. to say in regards to combat time. So, okay. I, I, and, yeah. Okay, well, I never had the opportunity. 
okay. to deploy for me. And I had asked, I had put in, and especially with the National Guard, which uh, I have so many, so, so many comments about the Washington National Guard, because um, you know it's kind of like a PT test where. Also, I thought I just got done taking this PT test. Yeah, well, we lost the paperwork, so we need to do it again. Like, they That's lost perfect. the paperwork. I just got fed up with it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm, not, I'm done. <laughs> like, And with my active duty time, I was in Korea for a year, which is a non-deployable location. And then with Fort Bragg, the unit that I was with wasn't deploying. Like, they had no plans to deploy. And they weren't really attaching their soldiers to other units at the time either. So I didn't have opportunities there either. So I wanted to. I wanted to do certain things, have certain experiences, but it wasn't in my cards when I was serving. So I, I will say this, um, and and uh, hearkening back to uh, today and, and National Mental Health Awareness, um, mm -hmm. Where we are is where we are supposed to be. Uh, yeah. The culmination of our experiences is what makes us who we are. Uh, and so whether or not, I mean, shit, I think, um, what was it? Dennis Leary said it best. Like, if I got what I wanted, I'd be starting center fielder for the fucking Boston Red Sox. But I'm not doing that. So, I mean, we don't do what we want because we are who we are. Uh, and, and we need to be, uh, I think we need to kind of all uh, kind of step back and say, yes, I'm grateful for the experience that I have. Uh, I've had my experience is not going to be the same as yours. That does not mean one is better than the other. Yeah. That just means I had this experience. You had this experience. Exactly. Be grateful for what we have. So. Couldn't agree more. Um, and with that, we are now going to talk about Mission 22 because we did a yes. charity stream for them. Um, Which was so much fun. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, especially because your kids ended up joining in on the fun, yeah. too. Oh, my goodness. They, <laughs> I, that, that was uh, totally amazing. Um, and uh, for all the viewers, listeners, and everything like that out there, uh, if you have the availability to get on Twitch, uh, I know Mind Goddess has it on her Twitch page that you can go and watch previous episodes and and her shenanigans and everything like that please go watch my kids had the absolute best time we all got on to our cell phones uh playing uh you don't know jack uh at the same time uh, yeah so uh it was it was a family event uh, and and so uh, they got to they got to be included which they enjoyed um uh, so it wasn't just me hanging out um uh, like we are now and, and, and chatting online. Uh, but they got to, they got to uh, be included, uh, which made them so happy. And knowing that it was for a, that, that what they were, they were literally playing a game to benefit, um, uh, veterans. I, that just made it all that much better. Oh, wait, did somebody and <gasps> cosplay Jenny has graced us with her beautiful face. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Twenty-three minutes into the episode, <laughs> you know what? I'm I'm telling you, I want panels to be like how it is on the show. <laughs> like those of us who are there on time, we're always gonna do their thing, and then just like either Jake or Cosplay Jeremy just shows up yeah. randomly, coffee in hand, comes yeah, over, I'm just here. sits down nonchalantly, just like, oh hi, I'm here. <laughs> I've been here the whole time. He's just crazy. Jake, turn your mic on. Jake, turn your mic on. If I was to do that, I would literally bust in the door, friggin' theatrical music playing in the background, just walking up like, John Cena! <laughs> I would just do the Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> we'll get a Mom. box of doves, and they'll, they'll, <laughs> they'll have like a... Jake? <laughs> They'll have a pressure step so that when you hit it, the doves fly out just this for you. This is not a John Woo film. Oh, no. we're gonna make it. It yeah, no, it's happening. It and we'll have, he has to do it in slow mo. And we'll have. My life's more of like a Michael Bay film. Let's be honest. Boom. So we'll have fireworks instead. In Actually, a very, in a very so cool. closed we'll off gasoline area. And everything like that and light it on fire. <laughs> See so many explosions. <laughs> Man, that Gifu's panel was lit. Really? No, it's on fire. Look. <laughs> um, so, 
So anyway, yeah, welcome, Cosplay Genevieve, to the middle of the podcast. <laughs> what? No, I've been here the whole time. I'm just quiet. Um, yeah, there you so go. So before we go on, before we go on to the next topic, and 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 I know we've already kind of discussed this, but um, if I, I, we kind of talked about like what you do uh, for your uh, post in the American Legion, um, I know that there's American Legion posts around here, uh, several of them. Uh, how do we get involved? How do we join up? I mean, do we just walk up to the front door and knock like a Jehovah's Witness, or or what do we do? I mean. It it really depends on what your post. Oh man, how do I say this without sounding like I'm mean? It really depends on how young somebody is there, and who or who is willing to at the uh, older like Vietnam ages of uh, veterans to actually create the ability to just easily get in contact. Um, okay. It, like an instance, our post, we have a Facebook, we have an Instagram, we have a website, we have a form you can contact to join, and then we bug the shit out of you after that. Um, <laughs> we are not the normal. Um, most of the posts, you got to try and figure out when the hell they're meeting. Uh, you might be lucky and they might have a Facebook page. Um, but there is a website, uh, generally, that you can go to. Um, you just kind of go to Google and you type in find a post. American Legion, and when you do that, it will pull up this lovely little node, essentially, <laughs> and you put in uh, your good old zip code and like how far you want it to be in the city, the state, and it will pop up with hopefully the commander's name, uh, which is supposed to be the face of the post, and the adjutant, who's the person who actually like runs everything, like they do all the paperwork and yeah. yada yada. But they should have a phone number, hopefully an email. But most importantly, it should have an address with a day that they meet. So a lot of posts are like first Tuesday of the month. Or we're going to do Saturdays at noon. Um, oh, so it rough. just, yeah, I mean, it's, you never know. Like there are posts yeah. that do Tuesdays at noon in my area. But okay. we're Tuesdays at 630. And we shoot through the business as quickly as we can. And then we just start drinking. Um <laughs> but that's because we're not there to do all the fun, stupid business things all the time. We have our officers to kind of mitigate that. And right. we want people to just be able to sit down and talk. But each okay. post has a flavor. And I don't know. I suggest mulling on it and not letting them uh, nominate you to an officer position within 14 seconds of walking in the door. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh, so... but that's what happens. <laughs> I, 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 I I can imagine. Um, so is, does it seem like they're the the organization in general is trying to move, update itself and kind of move away from that that the uh, the every basically everybody has that assumption that to be part of the American Legion or VFW for that matter you kind of have to it's required that you have an AARP card. Yeah, the geriatric opinion. <laughs> Oh shit, that's so true. Um, I mean, I can say I'm in the VFW, and like we're getting more and more younger members, yeah. like I mean, all the time. So the the VFW, and you can attest to this yourself. They made a pretty large jump in the last year, where they're like, you know, what's really dumb? Only letting our female spouses and daughters join this auxiliary thing. Oh wait, there's not only men who are married to men there's women who are married to men and they're combat veterans right. oh shit uh we should fix that and they fixed it and right. the american legion was like a fat old man having a heart attack trying to catch up um <laughs> it, it still really hasn't panned out fully they, they changed the last quarter the last quarter mile of the prt <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's that guy that just stops and smokes that's what it feels like um but that was me Exactly. They've had this thing called the 21st Century Committee in the American Legion since like 1990 something, and um, they're not doing really well. Uh, some sometimes you have people that are really good at the social media game, and it helps, and they're doing stories and they're coming out. They want to find those vibrant posts, but a lot of the time they just default to, "Well, no one does this much for veterans. We have the biggest organization. Give us your money," and that's like really disheartening. Um, 
so I'm I'm an I'm a department officer. So what that means is I'm you have your post, your district, uh, your area, and then department. I'm an area commander, so I oversee the northwest quadrant of uh, Washington, and I am like 15 years junior oh, to right. any closer person uh, at that table. So it's a lot of we've always done it this way, and it, you. You can break a post mold pretty easily just by showing up, but switching a department or national is a pain in the ass. Uh, there's a little Facebook page called Tal Memes, T dot A dot L dot Memes, and it's just this dude who has a hidden identity who's just like shit posting memes that are so real that it hurts about the Legion, and uh, all the grand poobas want to know who the hell it is, but no one will tell them. And they can't find out because they're not smart enough. And it's just I, great. I think every service has that. Um, in the Navy, we had shit my LPO says. <laughs> and yeah, I that uh, LPO is a lead petty officer. And so right. I mean, it's quite literally all shit posts about the Navy. And there was a witch hunt for a while because I mean, upper, upper I mean, and I'm talking like at the admiral level, there were people right. that were getting pissed and like uh, – uh, captains on ships and everything like that were getting relieved because of some of the stuff that was coming out from a shit post mean page because it was taken from real life. So yeah, uh, and it, it it's not just it's not just when you get out. I mean, it's an active duty too. Yeah, it, 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 it is amazing how much social media has actually had an effect on the active military. It has. You like. like Oh, man, you can't keep them silent for so long, too, because I remember when I was joining, they were like, they told me at MEPS, like, you can't post anything on social media because you represent this. And I'm like, OK, cool. And then I get out and I'm like, wait a minute, why are they posting on Instagram and Facebook from boot camp? This doesn't make any sense. That's not how it was when I was in. What is this horse shit? They're like, yeah, oh. we We've had Don't. to change the times. Things have changed. I'm like, oh, trust me. We had that one person in our unit that um, coming back from uh, a deployment, I'm not going to say where. Um, let's just say it began with an I and, yeah, ended in Iraq. Um, <laughs> and she had posted on her public Facebook page when our flights were uh... supposed to be arriving. <sighs> Yeah. OPSEC, yay! We got stuck in country. That's and- 101. That's 101 right there. I, but I, and, but that's I, the thing. It's like, I, even though, I mean, they said, and we even had, like, the Warrior Transition Program in Kuwait, and we're like, hey, don't talk about this. Hey, don't say this. Don't don't play, make it public. I mean, you can call your family and give them kind of like a window, um, but the, uh, the um, what is it, the, the family group, the FRG, Family readiness group will be in contact with your families, and letting them know when you're going to get home. Nope, this this person decided to post on a public page on Facebook. It's going down. <laughs> I, uh... So we so the entire unit got stuck for an extra week. It was a good time. I served in boot camp with. Um, I'm probably probably already stated this once before. But you guys remember that post of the soldiers taking all those little cool hipster poses with uh, uh, the casket sitting right behind them, and they're all like, "We're we're part of the um, the service yeah, group detail. or whatever." Yeah, the grave detail. Yeah, that post. Yeah, I served with one of the ladies who was a part of that that social media post, and I just face palm real fast, and I went, "You don't fucking do that." <laughs> don't put daddy in a corner. <laughs> What kind of daddy? Hold on. Maybe that's not the question I should be asking. Anyway, <laughs> that facial expression. The question you should be asking is how much? Hi, <laughs> Thomas. Oh, okay. So you're very affordable. Got it. <laughs> that's true. But, uh, yeah, kind of kind of getting back to it. There's no one solid answer, flat out. Um, everyone's going to have a different thing. Uh I was originally in a post because a friend asked me to come and help them revitalize it. Uh, and then that friend ripcorded out of that bitch real hard. And 
whilst doing that, they like burned every bridge that existed, and all the old guys were just like, ah, we can't trust you goddamn youngsters, and like just started being real assholes, so we just left, and um, that post hasn't recovered since. We took like 30 people with us. So. Oh, good. Well, I mean, don't be dickheads. Yeah, that's, no, you're absolutely right. That's um, That's just a basic rule for life. Like, really? Generally, yeah. Be kind. Um, no, no, I did not say be kind. <laughs> Just don't be a dickhead. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, shifting the gears back again to the uh, other topic. Okay. Uh, great, great question, by the way. Great question. Um, yeah, so Mission 22. We saved up $350. We raised up $350 on Twitch. Um were you there with her on Sunday? Because I was not. I, I was not either. Uh, okay. On Sunday, um, we had D and D uh, starting at like eleven thirty. That finished up at like four, and then we had a soccer game at five. So we were we were busy all day. To clarify, from four and then five a.m. immediately go to soccer. Uh, well, no, from eleven a.m. Okay. We were at D and D until four in the afternoon, and then we had a game okay. at five. Okay. PM. So I was about to say, wow, why would you put your kids through that? <laughs> Just because all, all I am the, the worst four dad the ever. <laughs> yeah. All the way to four in the morning. And they go, all right, kids, go have fun at soccer. And they just like face palm in the fucking grass, not able to move. <laughs> that would be uh, very fun to watch. Um, yeah, so no, it's, it's awesome. Um, I'm also very grateful that Mission 22 officially has a YouTube page. It allows me to see them uh, doing what they're doing or give speeches and really good, vi good videos that are inspirational. Um, it's always fun to uh, be able to search. And Mission 22, um, as the guy had stated, and I posted in my story not too long ago uh, before we recorded this episode, um, you know, you come home and you just feel very disconnected from the world. And of course this all culminates to why we're doing this episode this week. Um, you know, you, you try and connect with your old buddies, but they don't know what to talk to you about. They don't know how to connect, reconnect with you. And you just feel like you're all back in a foreign country all over again. Um, and it gets hard. And that loneliness, that disconnect is, the highest one of the bigger higher reasons right now with veterans and why they're committing suicide um and thoughts of suicide so mission 22 it is my understanding that this originally just started as a challenge on social media 22 push-ups challenge and that has blossomed into a very awesome campaign and program for the community, I give it nothing but praise, especially when we found out that uh, they give 100% of their proceeds to the, the veterans and helping the veterans out. It's They don't take anything for themselves, is my understanding. Is that, that's what Mayan uh, Goddess was saying, right? Uh, okay, so w the only expenses that they have are their internal advertising, so like their stickers and their promotional materials, um, <laughs> but none of their staff takes any sort of pay it is 100 percent voluntary yeah so it's really awesome it was awesome so, to be on which and just to help them out awesome yeah there's a, there's always over there's always overhead costs and everything like that so um but yeah no um yeah it was great we played you don't, you know, don't jack. know jack and then we played some rap battle game that lasted all of one session and we we're like Let's play something else. <laughs> and then we played... My kid um, has not stopped playing Bro Force. Bro Force! <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad kidding. I got them hooked. <laughs> they uh, are hooked now. But, yeah. it's They see me watching these movies so they can recognize the characters. Right. Um, so, for those of the listeners who have no idea, Bro Force is, is an 8-bit game with action heroes from the 80s to today. So you've got... Most of Arnold Schwarzenegger's roles, from Terminator to Commando, you've got MacGruber, you've got Blade, you've got Neo. Men uh, in Black. 
Men in Black's Will Smith character. Um, hey, boys, what's the character you unlocked the other day? Universal Soldier. Universal Soldier. <laughs> Which version? Uh, Van Damme. Oh my gosh, wow. So, it was awesome playing such a badass, fun game. And honestly, doing what we were doing, what what kind of what we were supporting it was it was interesting to have that mix i really enjoyed the living hell out of that until i was i don't remember what i was saying but i was kind of uh i was about i was like looking at the clock going i need to go to my event that's happening um the uh um axe kickers event with jordan and i had to i had to log out and I logged out in the middle of my sentence, and I know because I looked at Twitch and saw everyone laughing, and I went, shit, I uh, turned off my PlayStation mid-sentence. That's exactly what I did. So I apologize for that. That is what happened to clarify. Um, yeah. Um, why don't we turn take around um, with advice in terms of helping soldiers out for anybody who is not military I think my biggest piece of advice, and I've said this before, is talk to them. Um, you don't have to talk about their service. Just make them feel like it's okay, like they're human and you care about them. Um, that's my piece of advice. Now, since Cosplay Genemy has fi- graced us with our with her beautiful face. I've been here the whole time. Whole time. <laughs> um, what kind of advice would you give to people um, to help? Uh, ask questions, but don't ask detailed questions. I like it. I like it. And uh, there's a lot of things that go on that is inappropriate to talk about, but ask them questions because you still want to be, you still want them to feel like it's okay to tell you things if they have a moment where they do want to open up. Somebody does want to tell you the things that are harder to talk about, you have given them the opportunity to by asking the smaller questions. Cool. Yeah, I like that. Um, we're going now to throw it over to J4. Um, one piece of advice you would uh, give civilians. For the love of God, not every conversation that you have somebody, with somebody that's prior military or in the military needs to be about the freaking military. That's not the to- sum total of our lives. Sometimes I just want to have a conversation that doesn't involve that. Uh, I think that's one of my biggest pet peeves and why there's I don't hang out with certain people anymore is because that's all they ask me about and talk about is, hey, you know, they bump different questions about me about military life and, and aircraft because that's my job is working on aircraft. And it's like, God... Can, can we just can we talk about the weather, fishing, anything, <laughs> um, hey. ge- geopolitics in the the, the uh, Southwest Asia? I don't I don't care. Just something besides the military would be great to talk about every once in a while. Sure. Yeah. No. I I like that. I had an NCO. Um, we we're discussing things about transportation and he go and he talks about his route home and i'm like wait wait wait, wait. you take that route i heard the traffic's horrible and he goes yes the traffic is horrible and i love the fact the traffic is horrible because i have a minute to myself where i don't have to think about the military i just tune into my own jams i get to have my me time and just be me i'm like fair enough <laughs> uh well, now I'm yeah good. yep oh uh, Single dad, your piece of advice. For people that are not military, that are talking to military. Yes. Um, I think I think J4 said it best. I mean, we can talk about something that's other than military. Um, I, I have done plenty of, like, school talks and gone to different groups to to discuss things and everything like that i am the last thing that i want is somebody asking me so what was it like over there did you see anything and what did you do i not and i'm trying to do this politely um because the the number of times i've been asked i i 
basically the stand by me question. You guys know what I'm alluding to. Um, and I'm, I'm just like, you know what? It's my job. Um, so I did my job. I'm back. Uh, so let's, let's move forward. I'd rather talk about, you know, photography. I'd rather talk about my kids, uh, something else. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm with J4 on this. Uh, talk about something else. Welcome to our podcast <laughs> where we talk about nerdy, geeky things with a military's mannerisms and perspectives, but it's not all military. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> like the, to- the like that's immediately what I went to when you guys said that. I'm like, oh, thank God we talk about literally everything as much as we can that isn't full-on military. We talk about you know, the subject at hand that we're bringing up. Yeah, every once in a while we'll have one of these episodes, but I'm glad I don't uh, annoy the hell out of both, all of you guys. So that's great. Uh, Jordan is currently you having... You never said you didn't. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. I look over at Holy my Holy shit, you got him speechless for a minute. <laughs> It's what's speechless is that my girlfriend, who always sits next to me, she heard what he said and started laughing. And I look over at her like, "What the fuck did you just say?" <laughs> but oh, this man. is also this is also part of that that military camaraderie where we can I literally I just razz the shit out of each other. Yeah, understand understand that we're doing it out of place of love uh and and mutual respect and then guess what all right next topic yep uh, you'll know when it's hate when it's not so much an aggressive tone but it's it's risen to the physical now <laughs> and it also <laughs> won't be in front of everybody no no, no. <laughs> praise in public chastise in private come on yep. you guys yep. y'all know exactly. this that's it's leave called. It, leave it for the eval. It's it's called take you around the the. Uh, Hold on, back of the I, I think J four wants to say something. <laughs> J four definitely wants to say something on that one. No. <laughs> Nor- <laughs> normally, yes. Okay. Phrase, there phrase are situations. Public, however, comma, there yes. have been there have been moments where something egregious is going on. Where I have to go full dad mode in front of everybody. I hate doing it. Well, yeah, like, when there's like right. multiple people doing the same crap, then that, that's or, that's or, or one, one, or person. one person, one or person. Something. Yeah. And to be like, fair. To be fair. I I, I can see where you're saying <laughs> where you're coming from because let's look at some people in the military who've done amazing. something egregious. Now, there's this kind of like this silence, uh, silent opinion about it, but overall there's like this almost tonality of like if you bring them up, it's like, fuck that guy. Like, case in point, Bergdahl. You know, you, you hear the name and you're in the military. You're either your opinion is to heavily sigh like J4 just did, or some people are just like, God, I fucking hate that motherfucker. And some other people are like, I don't know enough about it, so I'm going to leave it alone. But when you do something that is that that per- these kind of few individuals have done, yeah, to a degree, it's like the whole community wants to come up together and be like, what the fuck, dude? Did you really just do that? So I, I could see where you're coming from, depending on the circumstances. I, I guess I can agree. I still thrive and hope that there's a degree of, uh, you know, private conversation. But yeah, I, I can see it. Mm-hmm. Usually, ninety-nine percent of the time, it's praise in public. I'll rip your ass in private. Uh, but there, there have been certain <laughs> times where it that I'm, we're going straight knife hand. What the hell are you doing? Yeah. In front, and my 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 volume is is up. Uh, late language. Has has changed. Yes. Profession, so. Professionalism has gone. Uh, I see I see deer in the headlights staring back at me. Um, things adjust quickly, and then you move but, on. But there are also different levels of knife hand. Because yeah, there's you've got the, the there's you've the got the lower knife. One, no, no, the no, 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 no. 
it depends on where it is. It's the location. So it's the lower knife, light knife hand. That's when you're just talking. You're calm. You've got the side knife hand. Okay, that's kind of getting there. Then you've got the full on. I'm. Yeah. Don't forget, you can put it on safety. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got the butter knife hand. Oh, and then you know Disney telling you where to go. Oh yes. Yeah. You know. Okay. So fun fact, because I was there, you know, about a couple of weeks ago. Obviously, um, I had to admit, I was like, well, actually, you're all you're walking J4 around, guiding the planes in. Yeah. Right. We have yeah, wands for that. We have wands for that. I'd have two. Oh, they have a little flashlight in their hand. So, do you? Does the Air Force get their wands at the Bippity Boppity Boutique at Disney as well? Uh, no, we go to Universal. Okay. All right. <laughs> no, um, so, Hogwarts. fun fact, side, Hogwarts. just a sidestep, I thought it was f fascinating walking around through Dis Disneyland now in the military, because pointing is rude. So every time I see a staff member doing something, it was a knife hand to point, and I'm just like, did they go into the military too? And my girlfriend had to be like, no, it's just rude to point. And I go, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Well, because sense. Some, some countries, it, it's very... Oh, extremely. Yeah. I was like, there's... there's extremely words offensive. For. Yeah, offensive. That was the word I was looking for. Words are hard. I got you. <laughs> Thanks. And, uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, they, they know to deal with people from other countries and everything. So, yeah, they do that. I, I catch myself doing it at work, too. I'm like, it's over... Oh. I'm not in the... I'm not... I don't work for Disney. <laughs> Just because you've been to Disney that much does not mean that you have to take their rules. It's 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 all been an elaborate plot from her is to lie to us about where she lives. It's not Colorado. She just lives in Disneyland. She live lives in, in the castle. <laughs> when I say I'm a Disney princess, I really mean it. That's why she couldn't come and join us because she was working and she couldn't just fireworks. Tag along. I don't want them to you know interfere with the. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Um, now we're gonna throw it over to Jordan. One piece of advice you would give to <laughs> like, I'm just here. Yeah, hey, right. What? Uh... No, by the way, we've got this guest <laughs> over here. Uh, one, piece of... <laughs> one piece of advice you would give civilians in terms of communicating with a veteran so that they don't feel alone. Man, that's probably one of the harder ones to answer. Uh you said that literally every time we ask I, you a question. Well, well you keep on throwing me. I'm gonna, like, there's, there's no I'm gonna agree with this. I'm gonna agree with this because I mean, everybody's different. What's yeah. gonna be difficult for me is not gonna be the same as uh, as Jordan or as Jenemy or as J4. I mean, we all have different experiences. So, uh, where J4 and I agree on this one, uh, I mean, they, you guys might not. So. Yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, we all agree on the, there are questions not to ask. Oh, yeah, yeah no, 100%. Don't <laughs> ask me if I killed somebody, but... Um... I mean, there there are definitely, we all agree on the, do not... Yeah. What's your K to AR? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Clearly, I have a good ratio. Uh, no, no, I have a good ratio. Fucking good. Above one. I'm still right? alive. <laughs> Yeah, it's above one. You know, dead um, inside, but... Oh. Yeah, you know. Aren't yeah. we all? Does that count as, does that count as an assist? <laughs> um, <laughs> but... Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> so, bad. Um, so, I mean, like, contextually, We're, it's... We need our dolphin! Yeah. Right, right. We really do. No. Context, but... we have somebody who laughs like a dolphin. Anyway, move on. <laughs> I don't even want to try. I was going to do it, but no, it's not going to happen. Um, you have to roll your tongue. You have to bring the Spanish element to it. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Roll the R's. Roll the E. You actually have a Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> I mean, so in the context of, like, military versus non-military, uh, you know, there, a lot of people are like, oh, there's this whole culture. That is a thing. Like there is a military culture in a way that people process and what they identify as uh, support systems. Um, but one of the main concepts that gets pushed into the military from any which end is that you have camaraderie, 
you have alien as normal and um, military as family. Those are kind of like the three things that you get shot into, which w whatever basic training you go to, even the Coast Guard. Um, and the issue that comes out of it is that there is an innate distrust of what a civilian tells you to do or suggests to you. And that's hard to beat because I'll, like, kind of like what was said earlier, you know, it's, it's not gonna be the same for me as it is for like any one of you, oh. you, you guys might've had a good, uh, instance with like a civilian who was like, Hey, you should go here. And they didn't get fucked over. And then you have another person who followed it. And suddenly they have an article 15 because they admitted that shit got a little crappy and they smoked weed and Oh God, like not that anything's perfect, but I think the best advice they can give is where to go to talk to somebody, a peer to peer type of situation similar to like what's going on here this is just some folks talking shit and uh that's usually the best way is just point them in a direction where they can feel reconnected uh and build from there because who knows what's going on i don't, I don't know i see points <laughs> you could point them in the right direction we went to opposite i went opposite direction we, we went to every direction because let's face it we don't know where we're going. Um, no, right here. <laughs> Are you a lieutenant? No. Captain. Funny oh. story. <laughs> oh, God. Don't trust butter bars. What? Um, yeah, much. <laughs> I had a butter bar. Take, he was um, designated to lead the unit to the field site. And he ended up taking us to a location that had 20 different satellites sitting around and he's like well this can't be right and we're like you don't say <sighs> and so he goes well there's this big patch of grass over here well we'll just set up camp here and we're all like all right great why is this here and one of the only guys who's had uh who had a combat patch on him he goes this is a fucking uh, um airborne drop zone is what this is so just be prepared in the event some soldiers drop down on top of us at any point in time while we're out here. I'm <laughs> just like, we're okay to just sit here. And he goes, well, the commander's not making any moves to get us changed, so I guess this is where we're going to be. And I'm like, cool. It's called giving yourself enough rope to hang <laughs> yourself. <laughs> Well, I mean, the tent's not high enough, okay? Let, let me just tell you. Okay, so I work I work on the Air Force Academy. I I work, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I ha I I I I work at the Starbucks on the Air Force Academy. I'm a barista right now. Um probably the smartest move you can make. She gets $80 <laughs> tips. She oh. does. 80 $80. 80. She sends us photos of the tips. She That's does. when the one fucking colonel comes in. All the other tips are from cadets that are like, I got <laughs> it was I, I digress. <laughs> you the, can uh, have a colonel that's a female. The, uh... <laughs> yeah, actually, all of them are right now. Uh, yeah. uh, anyways. <laughs> so, they just got off of uh, probation. They were all grounded. <laughs> they could not leave the base because they booed at a four-star. <laughs> at the football game. Yeah, that's a dumb move. Who did? It was like these are all like future officers. Cadets. They 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 did what? They, they booed the four star at the football game. Why? Wait. This is, the the Navy Air Force game? No, it was the game prior to that. The Navy Air Force game was at Navy. It was the game. Okay, prior I was gonna. To that. Yeah, because I was gonna say because we won. They were that. grounded. They were grounded that weekend. <laughs> That's why I was really busy when I was complaining about going through all of that jugs of milk because they couldn't leave the bay. Oh. <laughs> okay, remember way back when, when like on the first episode, and I was telling the story about how the guy told the command sergeant major the reason why he doesn't have his headgear is that it's classified? Okay. And then S Single Dad went on to say, you know, we always like to one up our stories. If you had that story back then, it doesn't matter anyway. Your story has officially <laughs> one upped everything I've ever fucking heard. Holy shit. <laughs> I was like... Okay, so what? I have a question. I Wait. mean, they closed the bar down. Like, they wouldn't, like, completely close the bar on the base. 
So they couldn't do, do that. <laughs> they were not allowed to leave without like prior written consent. Ah, oh, I kept telling them all they were grounded. It was hilarious. <laughs> but oh, what did they God. expect to fucking happen? <laughs> Oh, they're, they're just going to, we're just kids being kids. They're just going to, no, you're not a college student. Like, no, you are, not. but you're not. <laughs> Whoa. And, and, Excuse and me. Then, I'm sorry. Welcome to the fucking military. <sighs> military intelligence <laughs> is an oxymoron. And so I, I, I'm just like, okay, <laughs> this is what we do now. As the future officers of of the Air Force. Um, Got to get it in somewhere. So now it's a toss-up. Do we title this episode <laughs> A Sausage Party, or do we toss t- call it A Four Star Gets Booed? <laughs> Let it play out. God damn. <laughs> Both. I just, Both? Say we say, I just say we call it Academy Cadets are Dumb. <laughs> okay, yeah, there you go. Oh. Academy cadets are dumb. Oh um, my god. Okay, so we're about halfway through the semester, and so they're getting better. But like the first years are oh uh, when they first came in, like within the first couple months, and then they think like, they're all that, and they're like yeah. thinking they're gonna get stuff out of me. And I'm like, okay, for one, I was active duty. You can't get anything out of me. I know where you came. <laughs> I know where you're going. <laughs> but they're all starting to settle down a little bit the first years are but still the rest they're all idiots but they're oh, they're all idiots okay so i mean I, i'm sorry <laughs> the only thing they'd say they're okay. all idiots <laughs> i mean the, I, nothing against you j4 and jenny i mean the air force is literally the most civilian of all the branches of the military and yes yeah. i'm including the coast guard um and at well, the same we're time we're not going to oh, fight you on that I, no i but at, but As really they eat their five star de- menu I, have things gotten that bad that like a common like military courtesy is so far out the window i mean and i'm not just saying first years i'm just saying you know what i mean I remember when I put my feet on the yellow footprints, that was it. I was no longer a civilian. I learned very, very quickly that I was indoctrinated into a brotherhood, a sisterhood, I, a, a group of individuals that I did not happens, tolerate that I think behavior. what happens when you go through the academy is a lot of these kids know that they're already going to be a step ahead of the military once they get in that they forget that these four years they're nobody no no not even just those four years as <laughs> soon as they get out i don't give a shit if you're an academy grad jrotc i mean i retired as a navy chief it was my job to teach these people i mean these ensigns well, that's what even saying. those that had to well I that's mean, what i'm saying they yeah. they 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 know that they're going to the academy they know they're getting they're getting college for free. They know that right. they're being handed life, easy life, basically, for the next four years, as long as they stay together. But they forget the, that they have to stay on the straight and narrow, that they come in, they're like, oh, this is all given to me. I deserve this. They forget no. that they earned it, and this is a privilege. And so I think that has to get beat back into them. <laughs> I keep thinking about my one of my favorite scenes from the movie Range 15 where the butter bar comes into the hallway and tries to boss them around tell them where to shoot the zombies and they all like just they're like motherfucker and they, they flip his hat off of his head they rip his rank off of his chest throw it on the ground shaking their heads laughing at him cuz like you're a butter bar get the fuck out of my face and we're all veterans out of service get the fuck away from me that's all I can think about every time we're talking just like Anyway, but shifting gears because we are now at the yeah, tail yeah. end of this episode. Yeah. Um, 
it's it's uh, mental health awareness, and let me just say, uh, twenty two veterans a day think and or try and or commit suicide, and that is a huge number considering it is one percent of the population of America. So, um, do yourselves a favor. I don't. You don't have to sit there and thank someone for their service, but just let a vet, someone in the service know they fucking matter. You know, um, and let everybody know that you care about them. Um, so, uh, we were going to talk a little bit about Joker, but we're at the tail end of this episode. I just want to say that, um, we will bring up Joker next week. Um, okay, we get to see it before. <laughs> yes. Yes. We will bring up Joker next week. Um, I would also like to just say at the end of this to bring some information up Joker is a definite interesting movie to watch if you're interested in mental health for sure it's it's exhilarating pay attention to everything as much as you can look for all of the little details and remember this is a crazy person please for the love of god if you're going to watch this movie and get and i'm using quote fingers for anybody just listen to the audio inspired don't he has stated he is clinically insane so don't follow somebody who's clinically insane but at the same time i feel bad for him um it's a fantastic movie go see it um enjoy yourselves come back to us next week when we talk uh talk about the movie more in depth um and just talk about mental health a little further i um so hit us up on social media Give us a like on YouTube, follow us on, subscribe on YouTube, hit that little bell so that you get alerted when new episodes are up. Uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram when we share veterans on Instagram who are cosplayers. On Facebook, we publish our episodes and talk, and we'll be doing things in terms of creating events, especially because Emerald City Comic Con and WonderCon are coming up. Um, we have submitted for a panel for Emerald City Comic Con. Hopefully we get approved. WonderCon, there's a big event to a gathering to get everybody together and, you know, hang out and get a photo op going. That's going to be fun. <clears throat> we are also looking into, um, Single Dad, what's the name of the event again? Which one? Soldier Con? Uh, we are looking into Soldier Con. What's the other one, uh, about the, um... That would um what? You Fleet to... Week. Fleet yes. Week. LA Fleet we, Week. LA Fleet Week next year. We are looking into that very hard. Um catch some of us there selling t-shirts. We would love that Aiden. We have the opportunity to have a booth there. Yep. Uh so, so manning it all week. Uh so come get to photos that. come get photos with the cosplayers, those of us that are cosplaying at the event, um, and hit up Fleet Week. That's gonna be fun. Um and, of course, the biggest thing of all, since we are so small, spread the word about Geek Boots. Just talk about it because we had an increase of 10 followers thanks to the extraordinary um, – what is it again? Extraordinary what? Extraordinary Men of Cosplay on Instagram is doing a battle, boy, battle royale, and I found 13 – um veterans that are on that that are cosplaying on that competition to be a page model um that is uh, at the very least 10 people that weren't already following geek boots and are now aware of geek boots as a whole so spread the word tell your um battle buddies about us um yeah thank you for tuning in if you've tuned in this long uh, and jordan thank you for being on the show with us um and thanks for joining the craziness yeah teaching teaching all of us about community service in terms of military statures and everything it's it's been a blast um i'll be picking your brain furthermore after this um got anything you want to say oh me yeah jeez uh... good last remarks and we're done no I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> yeah just grudge noise um yeah, no, I mean, like I said to you uh, during that lovely little social, I think that uh, gaming communities especially are probably some of the better areas, and they always kind of coordinate with comics and cosplay and anime, whatever you name it, geek culture in and of itself. It just generally, 
uh, doesn't inhibit people to conceal a lot of stuff. I mean, take D&D as the easiest example. People just go fucking crazy with that shit. So, when I say crazy, I mean, like, they go, In yeah. a good way, yeah. Not like, oh, yeah. Not yeah, like yeah. Harley Quinn, Joker level shit. Um, but I, did, I did make a Harley character once, though. Speaking of mental health. No, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, hey, the boys are actually playing Bro Force right now. All three of them. Of course they are. Bro Force. Bro Force. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, what y'all are doing is a good thing, and it, it gets the message out there, so... It'll eventually hit that tipping point and then be everywhere, and then you guys won't have free time again. That's kind of the 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 picture is when I was working at a couple of odd jobs, and I just sat there and thought to myself, "Fuck this! I want to be my own boss. I want to wake up when I want to wake up. I want to set my hours and set forth how I want this to go." And then I met these wonderful human beings that all share the same passion, and yeah, one one day I hope to be able to provide them a paycheck. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> oh, wow. Wait, Aggressive. no, thank you. <laughs> Why not? It wasn't a question, it was a statement. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, I am Tom Cruise. With me tonight has been Single Dad Life Adventures. What up? Showing up late was cosplay Jenemy. I was here the whole time. <laughs> you were. You were here with us. And of, co- and of course, J4 graced us with his amazing presence. Presence? Yes. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. There it is. And of course, joining us with, again, just to reiterate, is Jordan from Seattle Post 206 of... Let me get it up again. Um, the American Legion. So thank you for joining us, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks cool. for joining us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> And our crazy bullshit. Um, thank you for tuning in. And uh, bye. Bye. Deuces. Bye.